So, last week Saturday, I went to a party with my daughter and I had so much fun. Yes, it wasn't my party, it was a kiddie party, but the women at the moms at this party, I had such stimulating conversations with them. They were women that I'd never met before. This was my first time of seeing them, but it was so much fun. I think maybe because it was a small number of kids to start with, I don't do crowds. And then the number of moms that actually stayed behind were also not that many. We were less than 10. And one of this in, in our conversation, you know how it is, moms are going to come about their children. One of, our, one of the things that I heard made me, made my hair stand on end, but I wasn't too surprised because this is something that I've heard before. And it also reminded me of something, uh, of a late night phone call that I had from a young mom two, three weeks ago who was worried about how she would spot if a one-year-old was being abused. Again, obviously some things were happening around her or some things that she was listening to. And um, I I said to the woman that, would you mind if I spoke about this on my channel? Obviously, I had to talk about my channel. And so today we're going to talk about the silence, the see no evil, hear no evil, silence, the denial that comes with abuse in the home. When children have been sexually abused in the home and all we can think about is, let's talk about it. Welcome to Coffee with Timmy. For once, I don't think even coffee is going to make this better. It's too, it's too sensitive um, as a subject. I'm going to read something. I have to read this out because it's quite long. It, uh, it's called What is Rape Culture? And it's from a website called Everyone is Invited in the UK. It started recently and unlike the Me Too, um, Me Too uh, movement, this is one that is allowing women of all ages um, to talk about what has happened to them, how they have felt violated or how they have actually been violated from whenever it's anonymous you just post your um uh, experience anonymously on there now i can't tell you how many people have actually posted because as i speak to you the numbers are going up the numbers just go it is amazing i you you, you if it has happened to you, you you think maybe you're the only one or you think oh maybe because i wasn't raped it was um different but uh it's not it's not so let's, uh, let me read this. So what is rape culture? Rape culture exists when thoughts, behaviors, and attitudes in a society or environment have the effect of normalizing and trivializing sexual violence. When behaviors like obfuscating or the non-consensual sharing of intimate photos are normalized, this acts as a gateway to criminal acts such as sexual assault and rape. Behaviors such as misogyny, um, slot shaming, victim blaming, and sexual harassment create an environment where sexual violence and abuse can exist and thrive. All behaviors, attitudes, thoughts, and experience in this culture are interconnected. I'm picking from this about this the victim blaming. Okay, about the victim blaming, about our about attitudes, about behaviors that um have become have been normalized when a child um when a child says to you somebody touched me in a particular way what do you do whether it's your child i pray not whether a child comes to you or whether you overhear a conversation of a child saying they've been touched or this has happened to them what do you do i find it very difficult to understand how women, and I'm using women now because they are the ones who have done this mostly, how women can keep quiet, women can keep quiet when their child is being abused and they know it. The denial, I, I had to go and read on, on this because I was, you know, my emotions are going all over the place about this, was mostly hot. <laughs> the denial that comes from um, when that kind of thing comes up in the family, it, it hurts the child that has already been abused. It's like the rape victim who goes to court and other questions are like she's been raped all over again because she, the, the defendant is trying to show that it's not his fault. Let's remember one thing. Minors, 
these children are minors. They are never, ever, ever, ever to blame. They are never, ever, ever to blame. How can you look at a child and then say you're aroused? How do you get aroused by a four-year-old, a nine-year-old, a, a 10-year-old, a 15-year-old? Who is your child? Who is your niece? Who is your sister? Who is your cousin? How? So what, what is the thought going on in the, in the head of these women? I, 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 I don't know, but these are the things that came out. The deny, the deny, okay? The disbelief, the uh, punishment that comes after when the child has said this. And I know, I know of, I don't know, Pastor, but I know of of a, of a, of women who have had to give birth to ch to children that are a result of rape. They they know who raped them. The family knows who raped them, but because the family did not want the shame. That's another thing that came up. If I'm, they don't want the shame on them, they would rather let this child be shamed. They would rather let this girl live with the child that she's had from being made pregnant by a mom, uh, by her father or by a grandfather, a uh, uncle or cousin. And the whole family behaves like nothing has happened. But you know who did this. And one thing that you may forget is that if this has been done to one girl that has come out, it's been done to a lot of girls in the family. And I wonder, how can you deny this? How do you say, my, um, you must have led him on? How do you say it's not his fault? How is it your child's fault that your, that your new husband, a stepfather, is raping her? I, one of the, uh, well, not just one. Apparently, women who are, depend, who are dependent financially, emotionally, or physically on the man, on the abuser, will sometimes keep quiet. Okay, we're talking about those who keep quiet. So we'll keep quiet and just let the abuse go on. What you lose, what you're missing out is the effect on these children for years. Some of these children become abusers themselves, and some just cannot form relationships because their relationship was flawed right from the beginning. But we're not looking at the children today. So let me go back to the mothers. What on earth could someone possibly be giving me that will make me stay? One thing I've always said, I would never stay with an abuser, somebody who abuses me physically, beats me, and I will never. And I would never let my child be abused physically. I would never ever let my child be abused sexually for whatever reason. If it's money, I would rather live on the street. I would rather live on the street. And I know I'm, um, maybe I'm being unfair to those who uh, found themselves in that position, but I think uh, mothers, our first instinct has to be to protect our children. Remember you carried the child for nine months? Remember the pain of childbirth? How can all of that go away because of the love for this man? This man might have married you because he knows that you have a child at home. Maybe he was a pedophile and he never even knew about it. Um, I don't know what physical comfort this person is providing for you because of uh, emotional. And I know in this one, Women get very emotional. You know, we attach ourselves to a man and everything. We cannot think properly when love is there. But I, I, my late uncle used to say, his, his love is one, you know, is, is, there's no love is blind. He's, he looks at his love with one eye open. And I think we need to do more than one eye open. Your child must be your first priority. There must be a safe haven somewhere. I know there's the shame of saying that this is happening in your home. But think of that child. Just think of that child. What can that child possibly be going through? If night after night, this man comes to her, it, it, and she's being violated, and then if they are any child, you know, at a certain age, what one something that they came out, kids who were violated from when they were like um, eight, nine, ten, says when they when they got to a certain age, the man leaves them alone. But what has been found is that there's another child. That is that young, like eight, nine, ten in the house, this man moves there. You cannot tell me that you are not noticing this. Huh? I've said to my child, if there's any uncle that is saying all the time, sit on my lap, tell me and don't sit on that uncle's lap. 
you know, you know these people in the family. You know this uncle that's always telling them rowdy jokes and slapping people on the, uh, slapping girls on the bum and saying things like, oh, look at you. Ooh, ooh. You're getting big now. All of this is what... Don't let anyone talk about your child like that. Don't accept it. Don't let your child accept it. It doesn't matter who the person is. Tell them. Tell them off. You cannot be so afraid to tell off someone who is making sex sexual innuendos about your child than, your, than the comfort, than the safety of your child. You cannot be. You cannot afford to be. You cannot afford to be. And not only are these children blamed sometimes, so we have the denial that we have the blame. Oh, it's your fault. It's because you wore that short skirt. It's because um, you wore a certain thing. And I feel so bad having to say this because I'm one person who I'm, I'm very independent in this is what I want to do. And I want my child to be independent as well. But I find myself saying to, kids, to girls these days, don't wear a particular thing. And your mom called me out on it and said, no, the men must control themselves. I know, I know. And I, I feel a bit contradictory about this. I know that the men must control themselves. The boys must control themselves. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. Do you get what I mean? I'd rather be safe than sorry. If I cannot control, and I cannot, I cannot control how a man thinks, I cannot control a man sees this flat-chested girl and nothing at the back, but if somehow you are aroused, like the guy that was um, also sent to prison um, again in Pretoria, who we went to his girlfriend's house, all the kids were sleeping, the five-year-old was sleeping, and he said he saw her and he got sexually aroused by a five-year-old girl. So he undressed himself and violated this child and left. But the child was able to tell her mother, and thank you, thank you, this woman. She took the case up and reported him. You cannot be quiet about something like this. You cannot be quiet about something like this. Evil has a natural, you know, it has a regular face. They don't write it on anyone's head. This is a pedophile. They don't write it on, on the chest. He likes boys. They don't write it. You know, we just, we just have to be the one to take, if there's anyone to blame, it's the abuser. It's not you, the mom. You didn't say you must look at my child and be aroused. You, but you cannot, you cannot blame your child. You cannot blame your child. These are minors. We are in charge. These are minors and we must be the one to protect them. We must be the one to protect and them. And definitely, definitely, the third thing that I want to say, you cannot punish a child for having been violated by an adult. You can't. You cannot punish a child for having been violated by an adult. That child didn't have any say in it. That child, they've been told, if you tell, this is what's going to happen. I don't, I don't, um, I don't actually know. Um, if you don't come out and say what is going on, you cannot be helped. There is a, there, there are places of safety to go to. I will put links there where you can go to. It's not just when it's a domestic abuse, sexual abuse as well. Children are at risk, you know, children are at risk. The last thing I'm going to say is, what are the signs to look out for? This is to help my young friend. What are the signs to look out for? Listen to your child. The first and most valuable thing is listen to your child. If your child comes to you and says this is happening, children rarely make up those kind of stories. They rarely make up those kind of stories. Sometimes it's, a, it's an adult that is, um, that is pushing them to it, you know, to make up those stories. So listen to what your child has to say investigate what your child has to say. Stop that child going to that house. Stop that uncle. Stop that man, whoever he is, coming to your house. Okay. What else? If your child is, suddenly becomes withdrawn, becomes violent, for example, they never used to be quiet, they were obedient, but all of a sudden, they are withdrawn. They are depressed. They don't want to go to school. They don't want to go to a particular person's house. Listen to your child find out what is going on there what has happened uh, th th there are just too many stories that um there, there's an ah uh, no then let me say another it's just so many bad stories that um, i don't want it to be about bad stories but you know the way a child becomes depressed suddenly when your child doesn't want to eat when your child begins to throw tantrums when your child begins to ex you know just behaviors that they never used to you need to investigate it. You need to find out what's happening. 
even if a child has started in new school and begin to behave somehow, maybe they are being bullied. You know, the, some, if you go to this website, um, everyone is invited website. Some of the things that happen, oh my word. And it's in school, it's in family environment. And that's what um, police and researchers have found out. Most, um, what do you call it? Most abuse happen with people that are known to the abuse, to the victim. They happen with, you know, to people, with people, the people that you know, the people that they know. So please, can we stop that? It was a nice title for a movie. See no evil, hear no evil, say no evil. But this one, when you see it, you've got to talk about it. You've got to call the person out. You might be the only person the child is able to come to. Please listen. Please listen. That's all I'm going to ask. Please listen. Watch adventure. Or oh, something else that um, that it says you should you, you should do. If you if you're suspicious for any reason, and you know what I'm going to say. Here on the side of caution, that's what I'm going to do. Here on the side of caution, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I don't want to be, oh, you've been overprotective. It's okay. Everybody knows me, I'm an helicopter mom already. But I will hear on the side of caution. Rather, my child is safe than, oh, if only I had known. Uh-uh. I'm not going to do if only I had known. If only I, if only I had done. Uh-uh. Not if only. I'm going to do the best I, as I, I, that I can as a mom to protect my child. And that's what I'm asking us to do. I'm sorry, this is not um, an easy subject, but it's a subject that we need to address. It's a subject that we need to address. And I'm not saying, um, please um, don't point um, false fing um, accusing fingers. If you have suspicions, investigate it. You understand what I'm saying? Investigate it. Don't, um, and you know what? Oh, another way that you can actually ask a child if you think something is happening, is take dolls, anatomically correct dolls, male and female, and give it to the child. And you know what? They might not be able to tell you, but they can show you. If they begin to play with, if um, if um, children, you know, young children need to play with anatomical, and they're doing mommy and daddy, graphic mommy and daddy, you know what's going on. You know what's going on. And children will they find it easier to ask these things out because sometimes they also don't have the words for it. It's never, it's not in their vocabulary. You know, it's not in their, how does a five year old explain penetration? But they can use the doors to show you. Until next week, where I hopefully will have something cheerful to talk about. Oh, and that reminds me, I, the video that I did on talking to your child about start when about you know when a period is going to start, there was a link there that um, some moms have didn't see, they didn't realize that I put it there. So I'm going to put the link again here. I'll put a link to that video here, um, because that doesn't have anything to do with this one in particular. I will so I will just direct you to go to that video. Okay, until next week. It's been coffee with Timmy. Bye for now.